Um, you may have rem remember a few weeks ago, we had actually quite a lot of fun probing the $337,000 cost of opening Transmission Gully, the big billion-dollar plus roading project that has taken, well, almost my entire lifetime to get fixed uh, or to get built north of Wellington that saves, shaves 10 or so minutes off that particular stretch of State Highway 1. Um, and it was open just over the la past the last lockdown and the Prime Minister went out there and basically it was cutting a ribbon across a road and it was $337,000. We thought that was steep. And we got experts in event management in saying we can't figure out how you'd spend that much on opening a road. And uh, Anita Baker, the Mayor of Porirua, came on and she said we could have fixed a lot of potholes on other roads around Porirua for the uh, $337,000 it cost to open Transmission Gully. But an official Information Act request has been published in a site called Kiwi Blog that breaks down some of that, some of that spending. Um, and I'm sure Anita Baker has seen that because I sent it to her. Anita, welcome to the program. Lovely to have you with us. Morena. Hey, what did you make of that Official Information Act response from Waka Kotahi as to the cost of opening Transmission Gully? Oh, unbelievable. Um, it wasn't broken down either very well because that lump sum that went to the Auckland company to run the um, event um, ha had so many things in there. It didn't actually give us the traffic control, the toilets, everything listed separately. Yeah. Um, one one large amount like that just it didn't come across very well. I do wonder about their procure procurement policy. All right. So, uh, but you could at least see nominally where the money went, right? Okay. Absolutely. And Hawake Ekanoa, which actually runs a charitable trust to do Shakespeare plays. Did you know that? Yes, and it's based in Auckland though, isn't it? Yeah, it is based in Auckland. And they got $220,000 of the $337,000 for their management consultancy, which did include a whole lot of things. Did oh. it surprise you that that was the organisation that got the contract? Absolutely. Um, that's why I said I wonder about their procurement policy because I'm sure um, Ngāti Toa or Iwi down here could have run something or a, a company in Wellington. But obviously uh, they use, use tech companies. So I was pretty shocked at that. All right. Anita, I'm going to ask you a serious question. Would you be interested sure. in hearing from that company as to why it did cost $220,000 and would you do so with an open mind? I would. I'd like to know the breakdown, though. I mean, traffic control. And about the procurement. Yeah, yeah. And, and the procurement. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, Anita, would you mind staying on the line? Well, because can, you, can I just say one more yeah. thing? Yeah. Because I, I wrote to Minister Wood about this on the 15th of June, and I got a le letter back saying it would take at least two months to hear from him, and I still haven't heard from him. Ah. Uh. Ah, OK. Well, ministers don't like getting involved in things that look slightly embarrassing. Well, Anita, I'm going to ask you, because I know you're a fair-minded person, we have on the line Richard Green, who is the head of Hewaka Ekenoa, the firm or the trust that got the $220,000 to manage the opening of Transmission Gully. And I thought it would be good if you heard what he had to say and you could directly ask him any questions about procurement and breakdown. So, Richard, I have to say too, Richard Green, happy birthday to you. It's your birthday this morning, and I know uh, <laughs> that I'm um, that I'm interfering in some family celebration. And Richard, I have to say thank you. Um, given that I know, firstly, I just want to deal with this. You've had quite a bit of blowback since your company correct, was yeah. identified as as the contractor that got the contract to manage the opening. What has that blowback looked like since this information was public? Yeah, kia ora, Sean. Kia ora, Anita. Um, so yeah. last week uh, there was um, stuff published about this out of context from an OIA and uh, the first I heard about it was somebody called me up uh, on the phone because our phone's on the charities register and uh, basically, uh, I won't use the words that they use, but um, it starts with the F and I. Uh, we were thieves and we were ripping off taxpayers and we were underhanded and um but it wasn't just he didn't talk to me i asked for his name i was quite happy to have a conversation about it because we're we're open yeah. we're a charitable trust we're published on the charities register but he just swore and yelled and screamed at me um and referred to this blog and um 
anyway, he, I eventually just ended the phone conversation because it wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't very concerning. Yeah. Is that the only negative feedback you've had? No, we've had um, my name's been and the home address was published on a blog. Um, we've been there's been racist comments made about our trust, and we are not a Māori trust. I would just want to point that out. We are a Tauriri trust. Um, they were misguided. We've been, you know. There's What's the difference between a Maori trust and a Tauriwi trust? Sorry, excuse well, my ignorance. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to work out that myself. Well, in the sense that we're not we're not Kopapa Maori. We're not run by a Maori or, or iwi organisation. We are a Tauriwi, you know, non Maori trust. We've been going for 22 years, um, working in the charitable space and the arts uh, and event scene. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's my question. I think Anita's. Uh, is justified in asking this. How does a, ch a charitable trust involved in the arts win or get granted a contract for more than $200,000 to open a motorway? Well, first of all, the $200,000 wasn't just for the opening of the motorway. Um, it was actually for me being in Wellington for over 11 months, organising a series of public events, cycling and walking events across the 27 kilometres of Transmission Gully. And for various reasons that have been, you know, in the media prior to the opening, it was delayed. And um, what originally started out as a three-month contract with uh, Waka Kota, he ended up me staying on that uh, job for 11 months. Um, so because of COVID and of things being delayed and things being put off and yep. things being cancelled. All right. Yeah, Fair enough. So it went yeah. from three, three to 11 months. And in that time, we had to organise these events on three different times because they were cancelled, put back, cancelled, put back. So there was a lot of expense around just on those public events which had nothing to do with the opening. The opening was the one that actually ended up happening at the end of it. All right. Richard, I'm um, going to ask you, though, did you tender? Did you have to tender for this contract? So um, we didn't tender, and the reason for that is it was a, under their tendering amount. You'll have to talk to Waka Kotahi about the specific tendering process. But it started off as less than 100 grand, did it? Yes, it did. And it was, um, it was, as I say, for those three months. And as the variations happened, like with the builder and all the other contractors involved with the road opening, um, things shifted. And within that, they had variances approved. And we went quite through a, quite a process of doing that we had to renegotiate contracts and those sorts of things because you know yeah we are a charity okay and, but and how did you end up in that space anyway nothing, i mean so. you, you're a charitable trust involved in theater how on earth yeah, well, were we you even in the frame for this for we opening don't a road just do theater. we don't just do theater we do event management and producing i've been in that space for 25 years um i've produced um pride festival um marches i've produced uh uh um Pacifica Festival, those sorts of things, um, all around Tamaki and all around Auckland and also around New Zealand. Have you ever opened a road before? And, how we got into that space was in 2017, I was approached by uh, Waterview Tunnel Alliance to do the opening public events for the opening of the Waterview Tunnel because I had a lot of experience in high-risk events. So I produced that for them. I then went on to produce the City Rail Link uh, Tunnel Walkthrough, which is another high-risk event. And so when Transmission Gully, when they were looking at doing public events um, for Transmission Gully, cycling and walking and those sorts of things, because of my history with Waka Kotahi and the City Rail Link and that sort of thing, uh, they got in touch with me and um, we had a conversation in May of last year about how that might look. Uh, and I had some advice for them because I'm, I mean, I'm top of my game in that area. Um, Sean. So, you know, I, okay. I know the risks are around. You've got, you're on a road, you've got, it's an infrastructure. The police mark that as quite a high risk event. Um, and in our current environment, uh, you know, you, you put a, a 10,000 people on a piece of roading with cars and, you know, you're asking for trouble if, if people decide to okay. take some action. So I, I work in that space with security consultants, health and safety uh, contractors who, Putting a marquee on a road, um, you know, you, that costs money. It's yeah. not cheap. Um, and But a lot of the infrastructure that we put in place that ends up being used for... The okay, so you say, Richard, this started out as a small job. You have a track record and experience in opening yeah. roads. It blew out because of COVID, but you didn't unreasonably charge. Anita Baker, yeah, having heard what Richard has to say... Do you accept it? And I'm going to give you the opportunity, if you have any other questions you want to ask Richard, feel free to do so. 
I actually feel sorry for Richard. I think he's been dumped in this from Waka Kotahi because listening to him, and I and I looked up the company name and looked into that, um, and not once in all those times have we been able to walk or cycle on it. We had asked them if we could do that, on, even on our link roads, and they said no. So it's interesting to know they were actually having three planned events, obviously, that were all cancelled because of COVID. So, Richard, I feel sorry for you because you've been dumped on this and this OIA has not come out well because it's not written and it doesn't list all the individual costs for those high-ridge items, you know, the road control, the toilets, all those things that have been dumped under your company's name. So... I'm sorry you're getting flack, and I hope you have a better birthday because don't take this <laughs> personally. This has nothing to do with you. This Absolutely. <laughs> comes back to Waka Kotahi and um, me not even getting a reply from the minister. Yeah, so and that's the problem, better. Anita, isn't it? Yeah. When a government department yeah. covering its ass and a minister who doesn't want to look bad don't give any information, things come out in ways that can be damaging, and I'll be frank, misleading, because, Richard, I'll be honest, when I rang you, I had a view of what this might be, and I, I'll be, I'm happy to say I was dead wrong. Um, yeah, I was sure, dead wrong absolutely. because of the circumstances created about people not engaging and releasing information. And that's what it boils down to. The event on the day ran well, it went smoothly, it went to time, you yeah. know, the road opened. The road now is amazing. Honestly, we couldn't be without it. We've got 59 shut. So no complaints about the road. I think it's purely that the OIA that has come out from Wakakotahi is not accurate. And I'm sorry yeah. to you. <laughs> Richard, can I ask you, does this put you off? And given that you've got some expertise in it, does this put you off doing this sort of thing again? Well, no, Sean, it doesn't because actually, you know, as Arts Trust, we've done it hard with COVID like a lot of arts organisations have. And we, we don't mind taking, um, you know, contracts to raise money to do the charitable purposes that we do every single day. I mean, it's not our core business, mm -hmm. but it certainly stops stops us having to um, constantly apply for grants and things like that. I mean, we've just opened a new theatre in Auckland and we're desperately trying to find someone to help us put three phase in. We have to apply for funding for that, which takes two or three months, unless we know a kind electrician who wants to do that for us. And we don't want to keep asking for that kind of support. We want to be able to um, do contracts like this in order to um, deliver on the charitable purposes which are in our trust deed. And that we, we don't apologise for that because yeah. we'd rather do that than, than have to rely on, on the goodness of people yeah. all the time. Hey, someone has asked so, me, um, could you tell us on. what Hewaka Ekenoa stands for in English or what yeah, the translation well, would be? It's a whakatauki, uh, Māori whakatauki proverb that um, uh, can't be literally translated, but w for us it means a canoe on which anyone may embark. So we're all about arts access. We, we provide access to resources and arts for um, arts communities that perhaps don't have the opportunity to reach them um, because of social or geographical or eco economical isolation. So that's kind of what we do, uh, and we have been doing in that space for over 20 years. So... Um, that's where the, the name came from, is that was our focus. That's yeah. our pure focus. Well, Richard, as I said, happy birthday and thank you for engaging thank and you. coming on the programme uh, this morning. Anita Baker, before you go, uh, I just mm. want to ask you on a slightly unrelated thing. Um, you may have noticed in media around the nation that anyone who's even thought about vaccine mandates or anti-vax is getting, um, you know, a good kicking in the media... I'd just be interested yeah. as, a, as a local body candidate, what you think of the media's attitude on this? It seems to me they have taken one aspect of people and they seem a little bit obsessed by that. I, well, I think it's because they've got candidates running in, in so the vaccine mandate and the three waters, I think, have almost joined and yep. they've got them running in all mayoral seats and in, in all council seats yep. and they see the, the protests and everything else and I think everything's just got a bit out of control. We need to take a step back. People who didn't want the vaccine, that's fine. We've moved on, you know. Um, I think we just need to get back to as we were. I'm sure we'll lose the orange setting soon. And how about we all calm down and be back as we were when these things didn't really matter. I think we've just got ourselves tied up in a bit of a knot yeah. about it. Yeah. I'm just on my way to, to, to go to the select committee for the three waters. So um, I'm sitting here at local government. And what, um, what would you be saying, room. Anita? Well, we support the three waters in general. Um, we need three waters, not One two. One of the few councils uh, that does. Can't, we can't fund it. You know, we simply can't do it. Mm. And for those people um, that say, I want to keep those pipes, I own them. Well, most of them are broken. 
do you want to pay for them? So, yeah, that's where I'm off to now. <laughs> Good on you, Anita. I thank you for your time uh, this morning and for engaging with Richard Green. Good luck. Uh, that is Anita Baker. She is the Mayor of Porirua. And uh, interesting that, isn't it? Interesting that often in an information vacuum where people, Paula Penfold, won't front and discuss their points of view, you make all the worst assumptions. And I have to commend Richard Green, who really has been under the pump um, for fronting and explaining his position. I don't think it was unreasonable. I'm interested in your feedback on that.